As a Toronto real estate agent working with Toronto condo buyers and Toronto condo sellers, over the years I have compiled a list of Toronto condo buildings that just in my professional opinion, purely and merely just my professional opinion that you should avoid if you are a Toronto condo buyer. So we're gonna go through the list of Toronto condo buildings you should avoid and much more in today's video. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sabiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Wiltron Realty Inc. As always, back with another video for you guys here today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. On this channel, we like to discuss all things Toronto real estate market and greater Toronto real estate market oriented, market stats, market facts, market trends, buyer advice, seller advice, Toronto condo buildings. So as always, if you have any further questions about topics covered in this video or any other video, feel free to just find my contact information on the screen or in the description box. Get in touch with your questions. And furthermore, if you want to do a little bit of your own due diligence before you do get in touch with me with any Toronto real estate matters for buying or selling feel free to just simply enter my name into Google go through my Google review so you have a better understanding of the experiences and the feedback clients of mine past and present have provided but enough of all that jazz let's talk about what we're here to talk about Toronto condo buildings that I would avoid if I were to work with a Toronto condo buyer or if I were to be a Toronto condo buyer myself and fun fact I was a Toronto condo buyer in 2021 and I didn't look at any listings in these buildings so the advice i give on this channel not only with regards to this building and not only with regards to toronto condos but generally is advice i follow myself now a couple of key 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 things i want to preface before we get into this list once again just want to make sure i emphasize the fact that this is purely in my professional opinion there are 60,000 agents in the gta and the toronto area who knows by the time of recording of this video when you're watching there might be a hundred thousand who knows and you can find other opinions out there this is just purely my opinion furthermore not all these Toronto condos are on a equal footing in terms of you know how much I am not a fan of them put more bluntly some of them are far worse than others <laughs> If a Toronto condo made this list, it does not mean that going forward, it cannot make significant strides. There are a lot of buildings that now are average to good buildings that in past years were not so. Furthermore, one other key pref. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's get to the list. Number one, and I'm gonna make this the quickest because there's probably the most amount of content out there about these buildings obviously the ice condos and going forward you're going to see that a lot of reasons why condos make this list are pretty ubiquitous here unfortunately the condo board has not and will not for the foreseeable future look to restrict short-term rentals here obviously short-term rentals mainly refers to airbnbs in conjunction with the airbnb issue you have problems such as constant fire alarms a high long-term rental tenant base so not just short-term rentals constant constant issues with the elevators and one thing i want to make sure i mention if you live in the best of best of best Toronto condos, which I'll make a separate video about if you're interested, even the most perfect condominium building within the city of Toronto and the greater Toronto area will have slight elevator issues time to time. And if you're a condo buyer, you have to be ready for that. There is no Toronto condo that will never have any elevator issues. But what sets apart the best Toronto condos, even really good Toronto condos, is the fact that the elevator problems are very occasional and very rare with condos such as the ice condos not only is it the constant need of repair for elevators but the long long wait times for elevators furthermore soundproofing for the ice condos are an issue as well sound from my experience travels pretty easily amongst units now in terms of layouts uh, this building is actually pretty average to decent funny enough i am a fan of some of the layouts in this building and the location is you know frankly absolutely fantastic it's aesthetically pleasing building and this is where i will be optimistic i think the ice condos if it gets rid of the airbnb problem will actually become a very undervalued and underrated commodity because once it does get rid of the airbnb problem it's not fantastic by any means but it's okay if 
it doesn't have that problem. Moving forward, the condo that shall not be named. Now the condo that shall not be named will not be named because I have made previous videos on TikTok that went viral about the condo that shall not be named. And it happened to go viral, uh, gathering about 500,000 views. And members of the condo that shall not be named threatened lawsuits against me and my brokerage if I did not retract my mere opinions about the condo that shall not be named. But without a shadow of a doubt, in my professional opinion, this Toronto condo, potentially one of the worst Toronto condos in the city of Toronto and with regards to the Toronto condo market. We're talking about a double homicide occurring within the first week. We are talking about horrible and atrocious layouts. We are talking about a builder that went bankrupt. We are talking about significantly limited resale value. Last I checked, and keyword, last I checked, because I don't have a running log of status of certificates of every building at all times in my brain, but last I checked the status of certificate in very poor shape. And I've heard on good sources I've never experienced this firsthand, but on good sources, I've heard CMHC will not insure this building for financing purposes. So on the financing side, it's difficult. It's going to be very difficult for you to get it financed if you're not putting 20% or more down. And I really have nothing against the people who live in the condo that shall not be named. And that's the thing, because units in this condo, the condo that shall not be named, are some of the cheapest Toronto condo units. So often my buyers send me the listings, look how cheap this is it's a two bedroom only asking for this much where else can you find a toronto condo that's two bedrooms in downtown and asking for this little and i always have to explain to my clients why the condo that shall not be named is a bad potentially even in my opinion maybe it's a hot take worse toronto condo than the ice condos and hopefully the condo that shall not be named does not reach out with another lawsuit anyways Moving forward, another downtown Toronto condo that my clients constantly send listings telling me, hey, look how cheap it is per square foot. Because some of the cheapest units in downtown at any given moment uh, for condos available for sale belong to this building which is one King Street. And at face value, it looks fantastic. It's King Street, one of the most sought after streets in downtown Toronto, Toronto overall, one King Street at a major intersection. And all those things go to its benefit, don't get me wrong. But the reason one King Street is, in my opinion, a Toronto condo building that you should avoid has to do with the fact that it is a mixed residence, namely that it is a condo hotel mix. Furthermore, unlike other mixed residences it is a mixed residence that has been converted to such in recent years so the private residences the condos you can actually transact were formerly hotel rooms and look we all love a good hotel room but after four days we get tired even of the best hotel rooms because of the layouts and if you look at units in this building those cheap units that people are enamored with and always ask me about you will exactly see once you go and see it in person or even based upon the pictures that in terms of layout, in terms of decor, they look exactly like hotel rooms. Putting aside the layout issue, due to the fact that it is a mixed residence, your maintenance is gonna be abnormally large because your maintenance fee, your condo fee, has to also account for and cover the hotel amenities. Furthermore, of all the Toronto condo buildings we've discussed in this video for Toronto condo buildings you should avoid, this has the most limited resale value because the other buildings we have talked about thus far and we'll probably talk about in the future, in the hottest of hottest markets, if you get a real estate agent that can work some magic, you can probably sell it for a good price if you've bought it maybe three years back, two years back. You can, you can make some money off of it. That is most difficult with this building here. Next up on the list of Toronto condo buildings you should avoid, 251 Jarvis Street. This Toronto condo was built by one of the worst builders as evidenced by 259 Jarvis. It looks fresh, it looks sexy from the outside, and guess what? A lot of other people might talk about this condo as being bad. And one of the first things they might bring up is the intersection. The intersection to me is a problem. Don't get me wrong, but that's something that's going to change in the coming years. If you've watched my most recent video, uh, in that video, I discussed and covered why I think uh, the eastern side of downtown Toronto, Dundas East, all the way to Regent Park and River Street is going to see immense growth, has already seen immense growth. And it's one of the best 
buy low picks right now in downtown Toronto. But that's only provided if you actually buy into a quality building. Uh, most often in that part of the city and in that part of downtown, you're looking at Daniel's buildings, maybe Menke's buildings. Nonetheless, here with 259 Jarvis, it's simply not it. You're looking at poor design, poor layouts, bad builds, low quality finishings, and a confusing configuration where there's a concierge on the first floor, but then there's another concierge you have to go to on the fifth or sixth floor. The concierge desk on the first floor is empty. I mean, I kid you not, this is not an exaggeration. I showed a unit in this building last year because unfortunately a unit in this building was one of the only things in my client's budget. And even going into the showing, I told them, look, this is not a good building. This is not a good building. So just you're aware. We went and saw the unit. On the way out, the door was literally broken. Not the unit door. The door that divides the building and the entire world, the rest of the city, the main door, as you will, was broken. It was falling. It fell. A panel of that door fell. And this is a couple of years after its construction. And of course, that's not structural as cosmetic, but it's a bad cosmetic. But the problems here are even more than the cosmetics. HVAC in this building is completely completely messed up for about, I would say 40 to 50% of the units. This results in abnormally high, high, high utility fees. So for instance, for 500 square feet condos in this building, heating and air conditioning costs for unit owners equal to that of other buildings where the unit owner has a thousand square foot. In combination with all the other usuals, horrible elevator wait times, constant fire alarms, theft with regards to parking spots and biking lockers. This is yet another Toronto condo building you should avoid with regards to the Toronto condo market and the Toronto real estate market. If you want a continuation of this video, let me know in the comments if you want a part two. If you want me to talk about some of the best Toronto condos, the other side of the spectrum, also comment that in the comments. Once again, this is not all Toronto condo buildings I would avoid, but these are the four main ones that come to mind. Anyways, thank you very much sir, for watching. Feel free to get in touch with me with the contact information on the screen in the description box. If you are a unit owner of any of these condos, it's not personal. As always, this is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Realty Inc. Subscribe for more content on Toronto condos, Toronto real estate market, and the greater Toronto real estate market overall. Thank you very much sir, for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.